Okay, let's make a start. Uh, to everyone, Nisan uh, Bulavinaka and Kia uh, to everyone joining us in um, the Zoom session, as well as those joining us on Facebook uh, Live. Uh, my name is Tim Kong, and I'm the program manager of the Pacific Virtual Museum uh, pilot project. Uh, and we look after digitalpacific.org from here in uh, in Wellington, in, in Aotearoa. Uh, and it is my uh, absolute privilege uh, to host our, or technically host our um, Digital Pacific Live session today, in which we are shining a light on the work of one of our content partners, Lalongo Nui, uh, as part of uh, New and Language Week. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to hand to our MC and host today, Tapatakura Rea. Uh, and yes, thank you so much for everyone for being here and hope you have a, a wonderful conversation in Talano. Thanks, Tabtu. Uh, um, I just asked Patrick to open our session of with a prayer. Right, Ke fomanatu eva hau niwe ne ko fa ki mai kai galat mo moto le to dangat niwe fa we la ki ha wo to to nu ko le ve ki mai ha moto le to malo lo si mo si pia fa ki ke tau sang mo lo to lu ko fa ko fita ki ai he manga ha to le nai lang matai mai ki tau fa ko tu ta lang si pia ni ke ha moto le tau sang nai ko tu ko tu ai ki ha wo hingo ye su ko ha moto le fa ko mo i tu ko lang amen amen thank you for check amen um, thanks everybody for joining in on Facebook, but also on Zoom. Um, just to let everyone know, if you've got any questions, just to drop it into the chat, um, and then we can relay these questions to our panelists um, during the session. Um, today, uh, oh, Fakalo my name is Savtukurai, and I'm the engagement manager for the Digital Pacific website. So my job is to reach out to all of the museums, galleries, libraries, and archives around the world that hold Pacific uh, collections and get them to share, the, share their digital collections on our website. So this can be accessible for our Pacific communities to see and recognize. Um, so today for our webinar, um, we're going to be showcasing some of the, the songs, uh, traditional songs that you can access on Digital Pacific website um, that uh, Patrick and the Longo Nui have been working really hard to showcase in the Rain language. Um, so we're going to be showcasing five songs that Sheila and Patrick will be talking a little bit more about translating some of the songs, but also why these songs are really important for the new language. Um, near the end of the session, I'm going to be showing some of the other resources, uh, new language resources that you can access via Facebook, websites, and also YouTube. Um, so yeah, I'd just like to ask uh, Sheila to introduce yourself and give a little bit of background on the work that you do. Kau elahi tapa tu, kalau falahi atu tapa tu Tim and Patrick, um, and also to all our view, uh, viewers out there, kalau falahi atu kiam tu luosi. Um, I'm actually a full-time educator at uh, Rowandale School, as a primary school all the way in Manurewa, Auckland. Um, but in my um, spare time, I um, uh, I help out with uh, Vanghao Niwe Trust and uh, NAFO um, uh, community groups out there. Um, and um, yeah, that's it for me. Thanks, Sheila. Um, Patrick, would you like to introduce yourself to? Yeah, sure. Um, so my name is Patrick Lino. I um, was born and raised on Niwe, um, came to New Zealand for uh, further education and um, didn't have much of a choice at that time, but have to speak English. So uh, it was kind of a um, learning experience, but at the same time, just trying to understand another language and living in a foreign land, um, carrying or trying to carry your Niwayan heritage in terms of language and culture as much as possible. Uh, but uh, at the moment, um, really, uh, most of my life I've worked in media uh, at the moment, I'm kind of doing my own thing, uh, just at home. Um, I guess it's the same with everybody else on lockdown here in Auckland, but uh, it's nice to be able to be with uh, as part of the panel this afternoon. 
Awesome, thank you, Patrick. Um, now I'm just going to be sharing my screen and um, showing the Digital Pacific website and how you can access some um, a variety of resources, not only from Nui but all of the Pacific. So just do that now. Um, cool. So this is hopefully you can see it. The Digital yes. Pacific website. Um, because it's we're celebrating New Air Language Week, we have changed the greeting to accommodate for our New Air uh, community. Um, so this website pulls together collections from all around the world that are Pacific. So um, as you can see, you can um, get collections from New Air um, here, but it also if you hover over the locations, you can also see the outline of our beautiful islands. Um, we've made this uh, website really easy to use, so you can explore media by image, object, video, audio, text, and map, and also discover some of our many uh, content partners that Tim is just going to share about. Oh, true. Yeah, so um, <laughs> thanks for the throw there, Tops. Um, uh, the, um, key thing uh, that we've just added to our site is uh, content and metadata or records from the Digital Public Libraries of America um, uh, data feed. Uh, and the Digital Public Libraries of America uh, pulls in uh, records from hundreds of institutions, libraries, universities um, from across the United States. Uh, their data set is about 44 million records, which is an incredible amount. Uh, and we are <clears throat> searching through uh, we, I mean, my colleague Ulu, uh, our data analyst, are searching through that um, those data sets to find items that are tagged of the Pacific in terms of Pacific locations, uh, or, or um, and um, presenting them through our site. So as you can see there on the screen, we're now pulling uh, records from locations like the North Carolina Digital uh, Association, the Portal to Texas History site, the Northwest Digital Heritage site, um, and uh, so. You know, ones where you might be surprised to think that there were uh, records of Pacific heritage. Um, but also, and if you scroll back up to the top there, um, top of two, um, the Smithsonian, uh, which is um, their, you know, the Smithsonian Institution is a rather large collection of museums. And I think I'm um, squinting the edge of the screen, but just under 60,000 items coming through from there. Uh, and if you go to the new A page, oops, um, in terms of the locations, uh, if you search Nui here, you will see that the first couple of hundred uh, are from Nui. And if you scroll down, that first one there is a an item of Tapa. So maybe if we select that, um, Tapa two. Um, and the, the thumbnail, the small image we pull through is quite small here, but we pull all the metadata from the Smithsonian Institution. Uh, and if you're able to, Tups, just click the link. We can just demonstrate how quickly it is to get to the, the actual source content. So in this case, this is a piece of tapa from held in the United States. Uh, and there it is there. So with one click, also two clicks, I suppose, <laughs> if you're navigating our site, you're on the source uh, of the holders of this record. You can see the data they've got. You can see the full size images and, and, and learn more. And I think that very quick 30 seconds demonstration i think is the huge power of this site that we make visible and straight away accessible items that most people uh, in the pacific don't in the first place don't know exist and in the second place don't know where to 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 find them so um yeah a huge shout out to ulu um, for all his work in terms of doing the data harvesting uh, and also our thanks to the digital public libraries of america and uh, all of the institutions across the united states who were now um hopefully going to be sending people from the Pacific to go and see and view the content. Cool. Thanks, Tams. Sweet. Thank you, Tim. Um, we'll just go back to the Nui page as well. So um, you can also filter by uh, media type here as well. So a lot of text, a lot of objects, and a lot of images. But you can also see um, the different content partners that hold these Nui items as well. So yeah, Smithsonian, um, Coconut TV, we've been uh, very privileged to have heaps of their videos that they've produced and on our website. Um, but so yeah, everyone can go have a look at that a bit later. 
Um, but we're actually going to have a look at Lolongo Nui's content that Patrick's been working on. So if you go to our content partner page and jump on Lolongo Nui, it gives a bit of a background of what they do and the organization, where they're located, but also a contact um, email that you can contact Patrick by. Um, so you can see they've got 134 videos, um, but today we're going to be focusing on five videos that um, Patrick and Sheila are gonna be sharing some of their knowledge about. So we'll go to our first one here. Um, so Patrick and Sheila, so um, we've got this video here, um, and as you click on it, you can also go to the original, which is on YouTube. Um, can you talk a little bit about this um, song and how it was produced and a bit of background on it? Um, I, I, I probably uh, am not the best person to talk about the background of it and, and how it was produced, but I know something about the song. Um, mm -hmm. before, before talking specifically about this song, though, I think it's important to make a note that I'm only touching a very small part of all the, the traditional Niwayan songs and traditional in a way that, you know, it was sung a long time ago, I guess. Um, and uh, there, there, there's so many songs out there uh, that tells the history of Niwe as well that we couldn't go through because, because of timing and also because I don't have all, the, all of them uh, up. Uh, on, the, on the website, at least not just yet. My, my, uh, my aim is to get as much out there as possible and, and hopefully people can come in and add to it. Like for example, this song, um, the son uh, of the, the lady who wrote the song came in and actually said, oh, this was the song that my mom did when we were doing a talent quest in Niue um, in, I think it was 1989 or 1992, I think well, it might be 89. Um, and, and that was Dr. Alvin at, uh, in Wellington. Um, and his family is in Wellington at the moment. And his mom wrote a song where they had to, to ha uh, enter into a competition. There was a song quest, a uh, talent quest at the time at New Hotel a long time ago. And they actually won with the song. And the song talks about uh, keeping yourself well, um, health-wise or in terms of your health and keeping... Uh, well, in terms of looking after your 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 the food you eat, um, and aiming for a, a better new way in in the year two thousand, and and you know if this was back in nineteen eighty nine, that's quite a long time, long way to to look at, and and I remember thinking at the time, hey, two thousand, that's a long way to go. Why are they talking about this? Uh, and look at it now, we're we're there, but. Uh, it's interesting that some of the things that they are talking about are still there. Um, and I guess as people, it's, it's a bit like uh, lifestyle, many lifestyle diseases, uh, non-communicable diseases that they, they, they're there. It's very, very difficult to, to do away with them. Uh, looking at our, our own lifestyle as the way in people, diabetes and high blood pressure are still there. This song in particular talks about uh, how the mum can look after the, the, the young ones. And, and the importance of breastfeeding and, and all of these things that came into the song. There's quite a bit actually uh, on the song itself. And one of the things that I really wanted to do was to put some um, you know, captions underneath those, those words so that people can understand uh, what the words mean in the way. And, and, and it's, it's, it's not that difficult to do. Like I think I tried it on one of uh, Hugh Tuanga's song. Um, and you can actually click on the caption of that and you can see the English translation of his lyrics coming underneath it. So it can be done, but it's just timing and, and effort and people to do it, I guess, is, uh, is always a, a, an issue. Um, and, and maybe something we could look forward to uh, working with the young people coming up in, in future where they're more tech savvy to do all these things. But anyway, so going back to the song, uh, it is a... It is a, it's quite a, a lengthy song, but it tells a story. A lot of the Niwe songs that are over four minutes, you know, tells a lot of stories about Niwe history. Um, whereas it's a little bit different to love songs, I guess, where, you know, it's only two verses in a chorus and that's enough. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know if that, that helps. Yeah, um, were many of these competitions um, common 
back in the way. Yeah, they were common in those days, and mm -hmm. they specifically have a theme. Like, um, I think the theme was, uh, and and I still think they do now, um, except that most people don't really listen to the theme anymore because it, it comes from the UN. The UN set up a theme like the International Year of the Child or the International Year of the Youth. And so I think this one was about the International Year of the Child and, and the song was very much about how the mum can look after their young ones and, and, and care for them. And some very strong messages in it. Uh, a lot of it is to say it's better to look after them now than for you to be sad crying when they when you lost them um yeah some some deep deep messages in in the song itself awesome it's really interesting um Tupper, to um how patrick mentioned about the subtitles and the captions because uh, mm -hmm. we came across the same comment when we um released the um bangahau new Ed trust uh, opening ceremony on social media uh, we had um comments on the side of people asking are there any subtitles any captions for yeah. it so they can fully understand you know what was discussed and all that so so that's something um that we're we're looking into for next year and in the future. Um, yeah, but this Lalonga Mai uh, or Lalonga Niwe, uh, Patrick has changed it too. It, it, it's all Patrick's work, but I can add on, you know, a, a, f um, a few comments here and there, but it's really uh, Patrick's work. And it's it, really awesome to teach the language um, out there. It's another strategy. It's a really good strategy of teaching Vangaho Niwe. Mm. Yeah, it's something that came out of um, partly lockdown. <laughs> you, you get stuck at home with nothing to do and you think, okay, I should do this. Um, but it was also something that, um, that I thought, you, you know, um, it's, it's, it's one thing to listen to the words. The, uh, it's another thing to actually see it and see how it's spelled and see how you mm. can actually pronounce it as, as, as it was done. Because the first thing I was doing was looking at it, okay, I can put the lyrics up, um, but maybe that's not enough because I really need people to follow the song as it was sung in a karaoke style, you know um. how they do it in karaoke. So, so it took me a while to search for softwares that, that allows me to do that. Mm. Um, and, and, then, uh, and then it's a matter of sitting down to see, okay, well, this is a great song because not many people have, uh, have, have heard this song after a long time and a lot of them have left New Air and they don't have um, any opportunity to listen to these songs over here in New Zealand, unless you listen to the radio, which is uh, the guys at PMN are uh, doing a good job at the moment, just promoting Niwe on, on their station um, mm -hmm. every Tuesday evening. And, and that's the only opportunity where people can hear those old songs. So I thought if I put them up on YouTube and get people to go there whenever they like, I mean, you know, the, the whole thing about the digital uh, platforms at the moment, people want it on demand. They want it whenever they want it. They, mm -hmm. they want it when they go home. And, and if, you, if you listen to the radio and you miss it on Tuesday night, well, you have to wait for another week before you can hear it again. So it's, it's probably ideal to do it in this way. But to go back to the beginning of it, I think that the challenge, and it still is, um, is to, to get some of these old songs, but also to see if the writer or the lyrics, because the songs are there, they're not my songs, they're, they're you know, kudos uh, and, and, and um, you know, a lot of respect to the people who actually wrote those songs and produced them. It's their songs and I really, you know, I, I took my hat to those people because some of those songs and the lyrics are amazing in terms of the New England language. So, so the songs are there, but I, I had to get permission on some of the songs to be able to put them up and sometimes um, the, the writer is gone. I mean, they passed on and I couldn't get any permission from them or, and nobody else have any permission for it as well. So yeah. it's there and, and that makes it a lot easier, but I wish I could because um, it's always nice to talk to the people behind the music mm -hmm. and the song. So, so the first thing is to get permission from them, but also the other thing, the other challenge is to get the right lyrics to it and to make sure that you, you're hearing it right because sometimes what I hear wasn't exactly what was said. And so uh, at the very beginning, like when I was testing it out, some people say, well, that's not what, that's not what it says. That's not, that's not the word. Well, how come it sounds the same? So you go through all these things as you're putting it together. So it's not, not necessarily just another 
another work uh, that you put up, you write the songs and you go through it. Like even Sheila's song, I went back to her and I said, well, can you, can you please have a look at the lyrics here and just tell me if I've got anything wrong and, and see if the words are, are right. I'd rather do that. I'd rather work behind the scenes and get everything done and get it right before I can put it up. I, I, I'd love to put up the right lyrics to the songs anyway. So mm -hmm. it's too much of a mouthful for me. Thanks, Patrick, um, and sharing all the work that you do to make these uh, songs accessible. Um, we've just got a, a question in the chat um, from Joy. Who wrote the Nui National Anthem? I, I, I was told um, growing up uh, that the missionaries who were who went to Niue um, in the early years when gospel went to Niue were the ones who actually pulled it off of the the Tuhilolong Niue, which is the Niuean hymn book that's been produced over the years, uh, and and they put a, a tune into it, and uh, I think it was Frank Laws. Um, who went up to New as a missionary, learned the language, speak the language, and translate a lot of the songs into Niuean that actually ended up in the Niue hymn book. And so he's the one who actually translated the song. Whoever put the tune to it or the, the tune to the lyrics, it could be him, it could be somebody else, but the only name I could come across, and and this was, and I remember the former one of the former premiers of Niue talking about it, about that song. Um, Robert Rex was saying that, you know, Frank and George Laws are the two who actually put those songs together. Uh, if not the lyrics and the music, but at least the lyrics, because their names are actually down in a lot of the songs of the, the Niue hymn book. Mm. I, I'm sorry, that's not exactly the best answer, but that's, that's all <laughs> I know. <laughs> something that we will research into <laughs> yeah some some someone some young person out there should do a phd on these things yeah. Yeah. Well, possibly george laws and policy rick so maybe then maybe yeah i think george laws frank and george laws uh it, it's not uh yeah i i don't know about the rexes in moment but i heard it from um from uh the former premier Mm. Um, I think we'll just share the about the next song on the list. I'll just share my screen again, which is this one here. Oh. You see that? Sweet. Yeah, I, I thought I thought that's just a nice uh, nice song to start with. Uh, but then when you really look at the lyrics, it's actually uh, a song that was put together by a group of Tongans who went up to Niue as part of Niue's effort to build infrastructures on the island. And at that time, they were um, they were building Niue Hotel. Um, and so, uh, when it's finished, when or when the project was completed, and it's time for them to go back, they sat down with some of the locals and put the song together. They actually sang, sung two songs and recorded it on radio. Uh, on on the with the local radio station at the time, and they started playing it. Um, and so the song was actually about how they came to Niue to help the government build a hotel. And mm -hmm. then it's really sad that now they have to leave the island and go back home. Uh, but they leave the island very blessed and and thank all the people in the island for helping them and and making their stay a very pleasant one. Um, I understand. Yeah, there's a, there's a close relationship between Niue and Tonga. There's a lot of work that's been done between countries and people moving back and forth between, the, between Niue and Tonga. Uh, and in those days, that's one of the things that they do. And I understand that they do the same when they were, were building a parliament house in Niue uh, and maybe even the airport. But the parliament house, I think there was a lot of Fijians who came over to Niue to build the parliament house. Um, and the hotel was actually the Tongan guys who came in actually put the song together they composed it with some of the help from the locals. Um, and so this is also a song that created a lot of interest when we put it up because some of the guys who knew about the song and knew about who wrote it came and commented on it and say, hey, my grandpa, you know, was, was the one who helped wrote that song. 
Um, so I tried to go back to them and said, oh, oh yeah, did, did they wrote anything else? Do you know about what, is there, if there's anything else that they do? Um, unfortunately, I didn't uh, get uh, too much uh, traction from people who knew about it, um, but it's there and, it, and people can go and talk about it and discuss uh, even the lyrics if they, they wanted to do it. It's interesting how they use words like motuse fuhaia because that's that's an old name given to to Niue in the old days. Like um, I think motuse fuhaia was pretty much to, uh, referring to an island that that stands alone in the Pacific in the in the Pacific Ocean, uh, which talks about Niue. That's the we we only have one island. Uh, and uh, other reefs around the place as well, like they're rich in that, but uh, we only have one island where a lot of where, where all the Niwayans come from. Uh, and some of the lyrics, you can see these things being said. They even talked about the hotel. So in the yeah. song itself, they took, they, yeah, they actually talked about the hotel and, and tell people that they, they came to build a hotel. So if you are listening, you know, 20 years later or 30 years later, and then you, you start thinking, which hotel was that? Oh, well, actually, that was the one that was destroyed by Hatta in 2004, and it's now no longer there. They actually, there's a small building there, but they turned it into a nightclub. So it was that hotel. It looks looks very different now. Mm. It's really interesting. You can show the history of Nui just through the songs and the lyrics that are on here as well. Um, um, Eo just said, um, I think, about the last question. From some documentation says it was Uwe who was surgeant World War I, Nui 150 contingent, who put the melody to the national anthem together. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, wow. That's interesting. Thanks for sharing that, Eo. Yeah. Uh, um, we'll go on to the next one. So this one's also on Digital Pacific. And then if you click on that, it will take you to the YouTube link. And um, so Patrick... we'll, just, we'll just tell you to close his eyes on this one because he's in here. <laughs> <laughs> That's him standing there. This wasn't planned. I never spoke to you before this. <laughs> um, but hey, um, yeah, it, we went to the museum because they, the Auckland Museum, because they were displaying some of the artifacts and they called the Niuean community to come down, have a look at the artifacts and have a look at the photos in there as well, because a lot of people were giving the Auckland Museum information about the photos. They come in, they say, oh, this is this person and this is this person. So they were taking, frantically taking lots of notes and and, and putting down everything that they could get from the Niuean community during that week. I think you all know a lot more to this than, and, than me because there were, there were uh, Niuean team who were working with them at the time and, and he was one of them. Um, so they're trying to, to call the Niuean people to go to the museum, have a look at these artifacts, tell them stories about it, uh, even give them names of the people in the photos, the artifacts themselves and, and also, and, and they did. And, uh, as it turns out, a lot of new ants turn up and they're very impressed to see some of these things. I mean, to the, to the old folks, they're, they're very close to the heart. You know, when you see old photos of old people, especially if they're your family, you would want to, you know, some people were even asking, can I have a copy of this? How do I get hold of this? Or, you know, we've never seen this photo before. Um, so at the end of that, we all came together at and, and sitting down, they shared some pizza for lunch because they, they just wanted to, to um, you know, have a bit of a snack and, and thank the people before they go home. And then they just break out into song and he'll just stood up and, and um, uh, I think he was prompted by one of the matuas to start up a song and, and they did. And, and this, is, this is very common in the Niwayan community or in the Pacific Island settings, you know. All of a sudden someone stood up and starts singing and everybody breaks into it. Um, and, and I just happened to be there at the time. I didn't have anything except my camera, so I started filming it. Um, and I thought, okay, it's, a, it's an opportunity to put this song up, but also the song itself talks about the relationship between Niue and New Zealand and how we built it together and how they thank New Zealand for, for helping, but they really want to continue that relationship and continue building the relationship between Niue and New Zealand. And it's, it's kind of... It, it, it tells a, um, a very deeper story about, you know, I, I mean, look at the Niuean artifacts now sitting at Auckland Library. Um, 
and they they could be they I guess they could be you know returned home in one way or another or uh, shared through uh, the new mediums that people are, are looking at right now. Uh, but they they break into a song. The song is about a, a relationship between New Air and New Zealand, and the old people who are there led the song. They stood up and they dance a little bit. It was an amazing setting at the time, and I. I'd love to grab those some of those images, and especially if they were singing New Way in lyrics, and uh, and I could put them up in in that way, in a similar way. I mean, we don't have time to play everything here, but if people have time, they can go through to the website and they can play it themselves. Mm. Um, Eo, did you want to share anything about the PCAP project? Yeah. Get him in. <laughs> yeah, you're unmuted now, so if you want to uh, unmute your mic, you can share with us. Yeah, uh, so uh, thank you, Petu and um, Sheila and the team for putting this initiative on for today. Yeah, um, just to give you a background about that event, it's a PCAP Pacific uh, Collection Access Project at Auckland Museum, which... Um, um, they had community leads who come in and you get the community to engage by coming through the um, museum so they can have a look at some of the taonga that's being stored at the museum <clears throat> because it's being placed away from, from our community and not have um, access to it, having access to seeing these taonga. But uh, on the day it was, yeah, people were just very happy getting up and then wanting to dance and sing really loud like how we New Orleans would do. Yeah, do. Maui. Thank you. Hello. Thanks, you all. Cool. I think um, we'll head on um, to the next song. Um, so this one here, I think this is at um, Pacifica or Polyfest. Uh, one of the new Air colleges came over to New Zealand to perform. So, um, did you want to share a little bit about um, the song, Patrick? Uh, the, the song itself is very common as well. It's one of those common New Air songs where, where people can just break out into and you don't have to teach anyone. Um, uh, but um, uh, I think twice now, a team from New Air High School came over to New Air to participate in Polyfest. And Sheila would know more about polyphist than I, I would. Uh, but when, when they do, it, it adds a really nice, um, pleasant uh, flavor to the, the dance and the music that you hear uh, on the newest stage on polyphist. And, and that's what happened on that day. They came through and they did some performances. And at the end of it, as they were, as they were wrapping up and finishing off and moving off the stage, uh, someone said a few words and all of a sudden someone breaks out in song again. And, and they started singing and dancing. Everybody got up and tried to get up on stage as well. The old uh, matures in there, the old folks came, came on and they started dancing as well. Um, so it's, it's one of the happy songs that a lot of people uh, I guess they, they use when they are in functions or uh, a gathering of uh, New Way and people, they, they can just break into songs. Um, I, I actually didn't think much of the lyrics of this song until it went up and I was thinking, oh, wow, it's interesting how they, they talk about the Vailele, which is a lake. There's no lake in New Way. Um, <laughs> but where do they get the, where do they get the lyrics from or where, how, why were they talking about the lake? There's a couple of other songs like that. They talk about the mountains and the fire on the mountains, but there's no mountain in Niue. You can see Niue is just a nice flat place and we don't need the mountains, do we? No. Um, but hey, uh, it talks about things that, that was foreign to us, but you can see that the imagination of some of the Niue and lyrics uh, or songwriters um, can easily bring some of those images into the song. So it talks about it's, it's talking about Vaitafe um, is, uh, is a waterfall and Vailele is lake or, or Namo is a lake. And so it's talking about lakes on the top of the mountain. And, and some of these people actually have been to other countries and they saw it and they came and they were trying to describe it in, in their singing. 
a lot of our people um, went to Samoa and Tonga, and and probably that's where they came from. Um, but I I don't know, and, and I I could never find out who wrote the song. There could be some uh, people out there who knew about it. Io might know, or uh, Sheila might know. But I just like the song. I like the lyrics. I like the way it's been used to sort of portray a meaning of something else that um, people are not familiar with in terms of where Niue is and, and its typography and geography and that. And I, I understand what you, um, you're trying to express there, Petu. It's very interesting how uh, our Niue songwriters refer to other um, subjects and things that do not exist in Niue. So <laughs> I, I, my understanding is like, as a songwriter, I, I keep to what's there on Niue. So I don't refer to waterfalls or lakes or th or mountains because we don't have them on Niue. But um, I'm looking at the title of this song, Tunga et Tauwailele. So it's like a metaphor they're using because they've seen it in other countries or other islands. And so they, they're writing songs in Niue language referring to, to what's out there and the rest of the islands. And there, we do have a lot of common Niuean songs. And, and one, I, I know that one of the most popular ones is when you go to weddings and 21st parties, that song is forever, um, you know, uh, broken out towards the end of the, um, uh, the celebration, something, and everyone stands up and just like this one here with the, the Polyfest uh, group that came from Niue. Yeah. Um, Interesting. Um, just had some comments in the chat. Some lyrics are very metaphorical and use symbols in different contexts. Ina just said, we use imagination and metaphoric language to express our feelings. Maybe Nuwe before it was pushed out of the ocean had a crater that was like a lake or lagoon. Um, Pepe also just said, um, song composed by Ikua Lupo. Thank you, Alupo. Yeah, I, yeah. I think Pepe. I think Pepe is right. I don't know, but I've heard of that as well. Um, and and Ikiwa is a, is a composer who have composed a lot of uh, great New Age songs, as this one as well. So I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Wow. So this Lolongo, this Lolongo, my um, idea, Peter. It's really, really great because it's now opening up this debate and and you know and discussion about also oh, who was the writer of this song and and it's time we start acknowledging you know songwriters and and document all these things because we see a lot of stuff being um played out there you know people are not acknowledging the writers at all for their you know for their work and 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 time towards um you know this kind of work yeah um, Pepe also said this was confirmed by Itsi from Tukui Tonga for Tuatia School. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we're all learning heaps here. This is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to our next song. Um, this one, who the composer is also in the panel. So, um, Sheila, would you like to talk about um, the song that you composed, when you composed it, and who, what event was it for? Oh, oh, thank you, Tapa to Tim and Patrick for inviting me to add on to your um, discussion panel this morning. Um, I am honored to be part of it. So this is actually a hymn that um, I wrote when I was still teaching at Favona Primary School uh, alongside the Vangaho Niwe Trust, uh, Tia Prusin, the current one, Mele Nemaya. <laughs> so I learned quite a lot of things from Mele herself. But um, this was prepared, the hymn was prepared because we were invited to Pacifica Western Springs uh, Cultural Festival to go and perform there. Um, our, I was helping out with the teaching of Vangaho Niwe um, to our Niue language class there for Bona at the time. Now it's um, formal Niue bilingual unit uh, in Auckland. Um, and the only one apart from the Alfriston College uh, Vangaho Niue class. So um, Monu Sitonu, um, I'll give you a, a, a brief uh, summary or translation of the of what the hymn is all about. Um, but I know that um, you know, our Pacific people, we uh, exist to, to serve our, church, uh, our churches with new songs all the time. It becomes a routine or norm 
to, you know, to pray every day for spiritual guidance. So um, the the terms that we use, they're, they're from the Lolongo, um, Tohi Lolongo Niwe, the Niwe hymn book, and also from the Bible. But really, it's in our head every day because we, we sit down and we pray. And, and some of the terms are, are there already in, in our minds. So, um, so, um, so the, the brief um, uh, summary will be of the translation, we're talking about praise you, the rightful ruler. Uh, um, praise you, the almighty uh, authority. And we're referring to our Lord here. And, and the, the first part of the hymn is actually um, Alia Siakia's voice. Uh, a year six student of mine at Favona Primary at the time. Um, she was taught to say this prayer and the rest of the verses uh, was sung by Tina and Tawila Tumbeno, my two girls. Um, but the, the, the translation is really, may your name remain holy. We praise, we worship and thank you, Lord, for your guidance over us. You are our savior, the almighty ruler of all things, our King and Lord forever. We pray these things in your son's um, Jesus name. Amen. So that's the first part. And the rest of the verses really uh, just reiterating what's in the prayer. It's about worshiping and thanking and yeah, to the almighty uh, sovereignty of God. So that's what the hymn is all about. The, the track, the backing track is really the um, English uh, track of um, the English song Majesty, that hymn Majesty. And it's actually produced by my twin sister's uh, husband, Francis Steelfilo, and um, he's actually Samoan, he's not Niwe. He's Samoan. <laughs> so I'm sure the Samoan, my Samoan friends will be happy to know, oh yes, we've got a Niwe in him out there that's uh, partially produced by a Samoan. So yeah, that's practically where that um, hymn came from other than the many hymns and many songs that I've written, that is one of them. And we use this one um, as one of the hymns for the opening ceremony. And we had a lot of comments from the New Year people. Who are the girls who are singing? Whose hymn is theirs? Where is it? You know, where can we access this hymn? Where can we get this song? Yeah, so um, yeah, that's about that, um, that hymn. And thank you for adding me this morning to uh, Patrick to add to your uh, presentation. Thank you. Yeah, Sheila also does um, a, a lot of uh, non-religious songs as well. Uh, but um, I was going to ask Sheila, why did you decide that the girls would sing this rather than uh, the normal New Way choir? Oh, okay. Well, um, one thing I, I will tell you about my songwriting at the moment, I, I, I write a lot of contemporary songs, modern songs and modern hymns, uh, although uh, I'm talking about the, the actual tune, the fussy, but the, the, the lyrics can be traditional. So I, I play around like that with a lot of my, my work. Um, I don't do a lot of teaching of the Lolong Tuwai, and that is one area I would really love to work on. Uh, so, because I had thought about it at some point, how can I teach my New Age students at Rowandale or the school uh, um, how to sing traditional songs and all of that. So coming back to your question, Pietu, um, at the moment, <laughs> I have thought of just choosing the people that I know that can deliver the lyrics um, clearly, uh, those uh, children out there who can pronounce the words clearly, although it doesn't matter. I, like I always preach before, it doesn't matter if it's a new learner, you make mistakes with the pronunciation, it's all acceptable. But um, it's, I write stuff now really for the young generation so that they're learning the language. Mm -hmm. I, but, but then I, I also, I mean, my husband and I, we also work alongside some new community groups who are the elderly, you know, um, who prefers to record their songs um, uh, their, uh, their new community songs. And we worked alongside them too. But my songs, I, I'm, I'm, I'm writing them now for the younger generation to learn from. Mm. I, I was just interested in that because I, I uh, 
traditionally you hear gospel music or, or praise and worship music in the churches with the old people. Mm -hmm. uh, when I mean old people, I mean more the more matured generation. Mm -hmm. And and they are the ones who belt it up every Sunday mm -hmm. uh, in church. Um, and, and even in here, I think there, there's a lot of matured people who, who would love to sing gospel songs. They that, that's one of the things that they enjoy doing. So they all, all go to church to sing. Not, that's not the only thing they do in church, but yeah, they, they enjoy uh, belting out hymns in, in the Nguyen language. And it's, it's a, a little unusual, though now it's getting a lot more. It's unusual to see young people come in and sing a praise and worship song. And I think we needed to do that more. So I, I, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed the fact that Sheila used the, the young ones to to start singing this and it would be, be even more um, amazing, I think, if the young and old come together in a choir and church some, at some place and start belting out these, these songs. And, you know, instead of just singing it um, without musical instrument, I enjoy a bit of drums and, and bass guitar in some of these songs uh, in church sometimes. So as we, as we speak, um, my three daughters, uh, Winnie, Tawila and Tina, uh, they are actually uh, finishing off the production of one little challenge I gave them. I asked him to find out and research how, what kind of software they could use to produce a little new song. To be, because I wanted them to enter the Three Star Nations uh, cultural concert uh, uh, of uh, singing. Uh, I think it's a singing concert tonight. So <laughs> the video, it should be ready by now to be submitted to uh, Three Star Nation and also to Mac Ikitule's Lolongo Mai for NAFO's uh, challenge, um, just to you know take part in this uh, Mangaho Niwe um, activities that's running this week. So um, that's gonna be out sometime today, tomorrow. Um, and and that, that song was actually written for our Nana Mathena Rex Cooper back home in Niue. Um, we're going to give it to her too, uh, because it's written in a manner so it's coming from a perspective of a person living on the island of Niue. So, yeah. Mm. yeah. Chilo, uh, the, the one thing also that I, I, I guess we should mention here was that we decided to pull together some of the lyricists or the songwriters uh, of, of Niue and um, or people who wrote songs anyway and who are living in Auckland at the moment um, and, and try to pull them together to come and share some of their talent and, and their music and why they write songs in a particular way. Um, and unfortunately, we couldn't really um, get too much. It was really great to bring them all together because they started, the, as soon as you start to ask them about the, the way they write songs, they, they went on about it as well. But I was going to ask Sheila what she think about the whole thing and, and perhaps more the experience from the old folks when they come in and they say, well, we never write songs. You know, when we learned those songs in the old days, we never write them down. There was no pieces of paper or a whiteboard or anything. We just, we just listened to uh, my uncle up the front and he started belting it out and you just have to remember it and try to sing with them. So um, yeah, perhaps maybe Sheila can share some of the, the experience that she had. Yeah, so I've had a, a I've had a few callers from overseas even um, after that lyrics workshop that Patrick and uh, Peter Palmo put together. Um, a, a lot of positive comments on, wow, that was really interesting. I learned quite a lot of new things from just listening to that workshop, and and even people texting through and say that was really awesome. But going back to what uh, Patrick was saying um, about the lyrics uh, yeah i think when we were trying to put it together one of the biggest challenge that we had was getting our people onto this platform like zoom for example i mean who was ever you know who they, they the first thing they say was to get away i don't want to do that go find somebody else to do it um and so that that's a bit hard because we really need them to be on this and especially lockdown now, everybody's saying, okay, you're not allowed to get together. So the idea of actual workshop just went out the window and we have to find a way of bringing them in. So it helps to have young people, the young children in their families who are able to put them on Zoom that actually brings them together in a way that we, we try to do anyway. And, and we hope to do a little bit more of that together, but it is a, it's a major challenge, Sheila, to, 
just to try and put our old people together on Zoom. Yeah, totally. I totally agree with you, Petu. Um, just but just going back to the um, the question that you asked earlier uh, before. Um, one thing I found from that lyrics workshop that was common between the traditional way of teaching songs and the modern way of teaching songs, it's actually the same strategy. It's the same method of teaching mm -hmm. songs. But the only thing that's different these days is we're using, uh, you know, modern technology, like putting a CD on or just play it on air or, uh, you know, on computers, you're, you're accessing amplifiers and you're just playing the songs around your homes. And, and, the, and we don't know it, but our kids, our little young people, like the story I was sharing the other night on that lyrics workshop, the, the three little people in my house at the time, they were running around, we were playing this song, New Wayne song, and we found out like a, a few days later, oh my goodness, the kids have learned the lyrics just like that. How powerful is that audio? We're talking about audio here. They, they didn't look at any lyrics. They didn't look at any papers, any written charts or anything. And they just picked it up by using their ears. Their ears. And then, so I found, wow, that will be a quick way for me to teach songs at Rowandale School or teach songs anywhere else. Um, yeah, so at one of the mama tour the other night mentioned that back in the days with her grandfather, her grandfather used to, it was Nongi, well, Miley, they mentioned that back in the in the days, her grandfather used to teach them songs just using words and the sounds from his mouth. He just makes up the lyrics in his head, start put it together, and then he's singing it. Gather everyone in the family, sit down. Here it is. Here's our song now. Start following me. And how powerful is that? Again, it's audio. It's nothing to do with writing the lyrics down. So that was really interesting. Yeah, I, I, I watched a, a video from the Philippines the other day and, and uh, just listening to how they sing the song. It's, it's one of these uh, challenges that they put up. And I thought they were singing about God having a bad Roman, uh, Rom, Roman or something like <laughs> something similar to that until I realized, no, they're actually singing a different lyric. So I, I, I guess that's, that's pretty much the, the basis on how I did try to develop the lyrics uh, YouTube page is to be able to, if you, if you don't really understand this new end word or if you hear it the way you hear it, it's, it's good to be able to look up and you see the lyrics and that, oh, so that's what it is. And, that, and actually it means that. So I think that, that's, that's part of the reason why I thought, you know, it would be nice to put these things up there and hopefully um, they stay up there for, for whoever who needs or generations to, to come and whoever who can make good use of them. Um, I, I'm, I'm not quite sure if if we've taken over too much of your time to put no, keep uh, going. <laughs> it's wonderful conversations. Just, just a, a little bit of a, um, um, yeah, well, I'll, I'll add a little bit to that conversation, Petu. So, like, here's an example. The song Ma'anu E, Ma'anu E, something, something. It's a song that Hakupu people at the moment play a lot when they go to weddings and events. And there's actions to go with that. And there's a, a bit of discussion and debate going on at the moment whether that song was brought uh, to Niwe by my biological dad, <laughs> Punapa Viziana, um, when he was on scholarship. And the lyrics is actually, I, I believe that it's not Niwayan, but he picked it up from overseas. That's what I know. But there's uh, another debate saying actually it was a song put together by Sapina, a way. So, so yeah, there's a, uh, there, there's a lot of yeah. songs out there that, it's... you know, we don't really know. Yeah. Yeah, Sheila, uh, the, the lady that you talked about before actually talks about a song because I, I remember them singing this song and, and performing it at one of the, the performances uh, uh, on Niwe years ago. And, and, she, and I asked her about it. I was going to play a little bit of it uh, over uh, through Zoom, but I couldn't do it on the night. But I asked her about it and she started coming out and, and, and she started reciting it. She started singing a little bit of it. And, and you could never understand what the words were. There was no, it, to me, it doesn't sound any way. And, but she said it, 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 could, it could be that, you know, a lot of these songs comes from the Cook Islands because a lot of the, the stuff that they do uh, is actually very similar to the style of the Cook Islands. And I listened to some of the Cook Island hymns 
the village where she comes from, they have a lot of films that's very similar in style on how, how the Cook Islands sing their traditional uh, hymns and songs. So uh, now we know where all the Cook Islanders come from. They all come from Niue. Oh, nothing interesting. I think I think, I think Ina, Ina will uh, dispute that a lot. Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, guys, this was a an amazing telenoir. Um, I think we'll um, I'll just show some of the resources that people could um, visit later on, um, and just kind of want to showcase the other work that other new are doing as well. So I'll just share some of the Facebook pages that um, everyone should go and visit. So um, Nui Language Roots, um, they've been posting quite a lot this week. Um, so make sure that you follow their page. Uh, Nui Kimoa as well. Um, we've got Vangaho Nui, so the language page as well. Um, also I found uh, an awesome uh, uh, childcare um, centre in Papakura that have been making some awesome Nuean content um, with their play school as well. So singing songs in Nuean, um, counting as well. Um, Sheila also sent through this uh, website this morning as well. And did you want to share who this is? Um, actually, um, this was shared by Patrick this morning. Oh, yeah, Patrick, sorry. And, uh, <laughs> and Sheila so, didn't know about this one. <laughs> I, I heard a little bit about it, but uh, I didn't know much about it until Patrick sent it through. So I know that this uh, Mali Eric is actually my sister-in-law for my biological family. And her daughter, uh, Sandy Langitupu, is a school teacher at uh, Point England School. She's the one who's got the expertise in digital uh, um, uh, ways of going about presenting uh, it started off as a family uh, um, learning site but then now it's becoming um, it, they've opened it up to the new community so it's a good start and I thank them for this resource it's really wonderful Patrick you might like to add to it <laughs> Oh, no, I, I just happened to see this. Uh, my granddaughter was just ask, or was just trying to learn some of the Niuean songs, you know, head, shoulder, knees and toes and that kind of thing. Um, and, and she found some of these and I thought, hey, this is really good. It's good resource. It's good for people to know, especially if you're, you know, if you're teaching your little ones to, to know how to sing in Niuean. Uh, it, it all helps. I mean, I mean, every little bit. It's interesting. Do you find, uh, Tapu, that... You know, there's a lot of materials now going up on, on social media, uh, especially in this new year, language week. It, uh, it seems like there was so much more than it was over the years. And I think lockdown has helped that. Yeah, I think um, the youth, the new and youth are doing such a great job to um, mm. get these uh, events and projects out. So um, shout outs to them. Um, for all the efforts that they've done to promote the new air language. So yeah, lots of um, resources are coming up, which is awesome. Um, also just wanted to shout out to uh, Pacific Education Centre. I know that we've got one of the tutors on our webinar today, Ina Ngaru, um, who runs uh, the, is one of the tutors for the new air language uh, lessons. Um, and also, I just wanted to show, um, if you haven't uh, watched our video on Monday uh, on our Digital Pacific page, um, we showed some of the collections that are held at the National Library. Um, so, yeah. Um, Where, the, where's the National Library? Uh, oh, so, the National Library is in Wellington. So, if you're in Wellington, if you're in Wayne and you want to see some of these collections up close, um, just give us an email. Um, our contact details are on digitalpacific.org. Um, or else you can watch this video, let us know what items that you want to see um, and come and give us a visit. Um, and also um, check out our social media pages. So the video today will be also placed on our, our YouTube channel. So if you missed it, or if you've got other people that want to watch this uh, playback, um, feel free to send them the link once Tim puts it up probably about in a week's time. Cool. cool. Um, Tim, do you have anything to say? 
Uh, just to say a huge uh, vinaka vakalevu uh, and thank you to both of you, Sheila and Patrick, for joining us for this hour and sharing your knowledge and your enthusiasm and your heart. Uh, and I was just reflecting on the theme of um, this week's Nui Language Week, which is, um, you know, may the tongue of the Nui thrive. And I think what you have uh, so so beautifully laid out is is a very powerful way for that to thrive. Um, our project is to make a visible, digitized, sorry, visible and accessible digitized cultural heritage. And our our default, and we often talk about this, has been we've started with galleries, libraries, and museums because of how we're set up. But actually, we realized really early on that for Pacific people, our culture is in lived and oral traditions. And oh. your project is a is a perfect example of that. Uh, in in what is it to uh, uplift song and enable um, expertise, traditional expertise, but also all the richness of the the process and the story that you describe, Patrick, and and the detail, Sheila, in terms of uh, your your own writing today. Um, and I particularly valued what you said, Sheila, because one of my hopes for this project is that when we think cultural heritage, we mostly think backwards. We think of old photos or <laughs> old ways of doing things. I am I'm always fascinated by in in uh, 50 years or 100 years when they're looking back at Aotearoa and Nui in, in, in 2021, they will be looking for your content, Sheila, and for your work, Patrick. Uh, and I just wanted to honor and uplift both of you in the space that, that you are creating uh, and acknowledge and thank you for that work for the people of Nui. But, but also importantly, and we've joked about it here, you know, uh, Cook Island is coming mostly from Nui, but also <laughs> uh, acknowledging the, the many uh, Pan Pacific and, and and links across the Moana. So thank you for doing that. Um, I take it, Tim, that um, you're, you're also a Niwean who comes from Fiji. That's the one. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I am now. <laughs> um, but thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, and uh, as Tapatu said, we will look forward to promoting this uh, alongside um, uh, your work, obviously just using YouTube as a platform, but yeah, we're, we're really honored to share your work through our, our site and uh, we look forward to sharing more of that and connecting. Right. Um, Can I just say, uh, Tim, before we finish, I, I just wanted to say thank you very much for promoting anything and everything to do with the Niue language or the Niue culture and traditions. Um, I think the language in particular carries our culture and our heritage, our identity, and it's very important to us. And, and I just wanted to say thank you. We, we really do appreciate it, even though we don't say it uh, or, or we don't come to you and say it. Uh, but we do appreciate everyone who has been out there trying to promote the Niue language and helping us to promote our culture, our language and our identity. Um, we, 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 we know you don't have to, but you did. And, and that's, we're, we're grateful for that. I thank you for that. And also for my, from my side, I think, you know, um, my respect goes out to the people who wrote those songs and put the music together. And, and they're not my songs. I just put them up for people to enjoy. And I hope that, you know, we could help in that way, keep and, and preserve and promote the new heritage and, and language and tradition in terms of songs. So, yeah, I just wanted to add that and, um, before... Uh, we finish. Thank you very much, Tim and Tapotu. And and who's the other guy you were talking about, Tim? Uh, Ulu, I think. Uh, Ulu, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Ulu, Ulu's the Samoan who's from Nui. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, he's a data analyst who does all the harvesting. But yeah, we'll pass on the, the right. Thanks. Uh, I know we've um, I know we've gone over time, but I just want to quickly um um acknowledge the viewers out there for come le mole go we like him to learn if no no make it like a kind of digital pacific um um for come le mole quite of kakwana osi hanani kisi atu he tangata ne to hito he e si moe se ilo um ilo mitake of kakwana ya um kwe um sound if it's followed by a vowel a or e you pronounce that t letter as s uh, as a sa sound but anyway fakawe ke ham to la to ma tai mai ma io ko ko hai fuku ko kisi kisi mai him na hune a we to to lo but a big thank you huge thank you tim and um tapatu for and patrick for inviting me to add on to this uh, um uh, 
you know, the, uh, this webinar this morning. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, Patrick, I think maybe this is a good time to close our, our session in a prayer. Okay, let's Thank pray. You. For <laughs> Amen. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Right, thank you. May take my top of two. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so she much. Lies, uh, she loves the like gym, but uh, she comes from Niue. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone from the rock. <laughs>